Thanks to our friends at The Motley Fool for sponsoring this video. Visit fool.com forward slash rive to receive the top 10 stocks to buy right now. There are always opportunities on the stock market if you know where to look. And right now with interest rates rising, with some growth and tech stocks falling, there are still a number of companies that are very profitable, very sticky, and have a very bright future. So I wanna highlight three that I think are extremely cheap today for investors who are buying and holding long-term. I'm Travis William. Thank you for watching Rive Investing. Please subscribe here on YouTube for all of my coverage and turn on those alerts so you can find out when new videos come up. Let's talk about the three stocks I wanna to highlight today. And the first is General Motors. Now, this is a legacy automaker and a lot of investors have kind of thrown these stocks out because they think they're gonna be disrupted by electric vehicle companies who are really the startups in the space and taking market share. But keep in mind that General Motors is expanding its own production of electric vehicles and it has a very profitable manufacturing business, primarily selling trucks and SUVs. So what do the numbers look like? Well, over the past year, the company has generated $9.9 .9 billion in net income and the stock with a market cap of just $55.4 billion is trading with a price to earnings multiple of six. Now there's certainly pressure to come across the auto industry in 2023. We've seen prices come down for a lot of electric vehicles. General Motors is expecting its net income to come down slightly this year. And overall the operating environment just isn't gonna be quite as good as it was over the last few years because the supply and demand dynamics are gonna be more normal than they have been. But I think there's reason to be optimistic about this company long-term. So it has a financially sound base with this profitable manufacturing business, but it also owns 80% of crews. And that's really where I find a lot of excitement in the growth potential for General Motors long-term. Cruise is already operating commercial operations for autonomous ride-sharing vehicles in three cities in the U.S. and is expanding that to not only more cities in the U.S., but around the world starting this year. This could ultimately be the really disruptive piece of the auto industry and transportation over the next decade is replacing automobile ownership with autonomous ride-sharing and Cruise is one of the leaders there. So with General Motors, you're getting a very cheap stock in a single digit price to earnings multiple, a company that's generating cash flow, and basically for free, you're getting this growth option with Cruise. So I really like both the value of the stock and the long-term growth potential there. Now Verizon is another business that I think is very sticky long-term. If you think about smartphones is not something where pe people are just gonna be canceling and giving up their smartphone connection. There are only three operators in the US. Verizon is one of the leaders and one of the most profitable and investors are getting it for just a 7.5 price to earnings multiple right now. On top of that, it has a 6.9% dividend yield. So value from both a price to earnings multiple and from the dividend. Now this is a very competitive market, but Verizon has spent the last few years investing a lot in investing a lot in building out its 5G network. That's why it has $150 billion in debt on the balance sheet, but that's also what's ultimately gonna drive returns for the business long-term. The company is expecting slow but steady growth in 2023, low single digit growth for its service revenue. But what I'm really impressed with is it's is what Verizon calls fixed wireless. This is basically 5G broadband connectivity for homes and businesses, replacing cable or even fiber in some cases. This is a very low cost option. All Verizon does is ship you a box that you plug into the wall and now you have broadband connection that is really competitive with Comcast. I've been using this for about a year now and it's actually a better, more reliable service than Comcast Cable was for me. And Verizon is now adding nearly 400,000 fixed wireless customers per quarter. This is, a really, this is a really big potential growth avenue for Verizon, and I think makes the business even stickier. It's one thing to change where you're getting your smartphone service from. It's another thing if you have to change both your smartphone service and where you're getting your broadband connection at home or through your business. So I think this is an incremental revenue source. The service segment of the business, basically what you're paying for wireless is actually a very, very high margin business for Verizon. And that's just gonna continue to grow with fixed wireless. So I love where the company is going. Investors are gonna get it for a great value right now. The one thing to watch for is that debt level. I would love to see management pay down debt over the next few years and take risk out of the business. But I think they will be able to do that as they cut back on capital spending, which is gonna come down five to $6 billion 
over the next couple of years because they've done a lot of the front end legwork of buying Spectrum and building out that 5G wireless network. So this is a company that we're getting for a great value and I think will continue to slowly but surely grow over the long term. The final company is Chevron, the oil and gas major. This is a company that has been riding the wave of higher oil prices and really more prudent investments over the last few years. The oil and gas business has really gone through a dynamic shift in just the last five years or so. You might remember in the mid 2010s, there was a lot of investment in shale and ultra deep water. And in reality, those investments didn't turn out in a lot of cases. The entire industry burned about a trillion dollars in capital in both debt and equity value. And so coming into the pandemic, then when prices went negative for a very short period of time after the pandemic started, companies really cut back their spending. And as oil and gas prices rose and demand started to increase as the economy improved, we started to see cash flow increase as well. But companies didn't respond. But companies like Chevron did not respond by increasing their capital spending at a similar rate. So they've really been prudent on how much capital they're putting into the ground. One of the reasons for that is they're seeing companies like General Motors increase their production of electric vehicles. So they're seeing the writing on the wall. The demand for oil in particular is not going to be growing forever. There is an end to this game. So you're not going to want to overinvest at a time when prices could potentially come down. What we have as a result is a really great cash flow business. Over the last year, the company has generated $35.5 billion in cash and actually paid down its debt by $8.1 billion to $23.3 billion, pays a nice 3.7% dividend yield, and investors are getting this stock for just nine times earnings. Now, oil prices have come down a little bit over the past year, so the free cash flow number in particular will be a little bit volatile. But I expect this to be a high cash flow business over the next decade as management, both at Chevron and its competitors, start to be more prudent in how much money they're investing in growth and how much they're trying to return to shareholders in the form of paying down debt, buying back stock, or paying out dividends. So I think this is an industry and company that are really well positioned right now. What do you think about these three stocks as cheap stocks right now? They're all trading single digit PE multiples. General Motors, Verizon, and Chevron. I'd love to hear your comments in the comments section below. Follow Rive Investing. Thanks so much, and I'll see you here next time.